This is my La Pavoni Euro Piccola, and it served me well now for over a year, making excellent espresso every morning. But to be honest, there are a few things that I wish I had known before buying it. So if you're considering buying one of these icons of Italian coffee, I made this video for you. We're going to cover some of the most important things that you should be considering before buying a La Pavoni Euro Piccola what mistakes to avoid at all costs, some honest feedback after pulling shots with this for over a year, and finally, and most importantly, if this machine is right for you. Stick around. It's quite understandable why you would want to get a La Pavoni Aero Piccola. I mean, it's a timeless classic. The label La Pavoni appears on some of history's very first espresso machines. And while the Aero Piccola has been around since the early 60s, its design has remained virtually unchanged. Maybe it's also that you've spotted a rare opportunity in doing at least one thing better than 00 agent James Bond himself, which is pulling a good shot of espresso for yourself and your guests. Is that all it does? All jokes aside, perhaps you're interested in the feeling of pulling a shot with your own hands, without having a noisy electric motor wake you up every morning. Whatever it is, it does come with some significant drawbacks that are often less discussed that you should consider. Quick disclaimer, I am not a coffee expert. I am just a very passionate enjoyer of well-brewed espresso. So my advice will be less about the intricate technical details of this machine, but more for everyday people who are not necessarily coffee experts and whether they can enjoy this machine or not. Okay, the Euro Piccola is not a group player. Whatever people may say, it is simply not designed to quickly dish out multiple doses of coffee for a group of people, nor is it a machine for the whole family, for several reasons. The Euro Piccola has a water tank of 0.8 liters, which means that technically you could pull eight consecutive shots of coffee with it. In practical terms though, it's a whole other story. As you'll see in my demonstration later, prepping and pulling a shot with this takes a bit of time. Meaning that even if you can pull eight consecutive shots for your eight fictional guests, without ha ever having to fill up the tank, the first ones served will already have finished their espresso while the last ones will be waiting on theirs. As a matter of fact, for a group of guests, I still prefer to brew up a pot of mocha with the Bialetti rather than firing up the La Pavoni. Furthermore, this thing gets extremely hot and is surprisingly light. This means that if you have any kids or animals running around your kitchen, I would keep that in mind. This definitely has the potential to cause some serious injury. It's a journey. When I first got my Oro Piccola, I was very excited. I mean, finally I was going to be able to pull a real cup of Italian espresso like a full-fledged, hot-blooded Neapolitan barista. I set up my camera and filmed my first shot. And lo and behold, no crema. I mean, it tasted alright, it just lacked that signature texture and crema that I was looking for, especially out of a machine that I had just paid upwards to 500 euros for. It is possible to get outstanding shots of espresso, including crema, out of this thing. But what was I doing wrong? Well, that is when I embarked on a long journey. I researched and scoured the web, read it, different forums, and I went down a lot of coffee nerd rabbit holes. I experimented with different beans and coffee quantities until one day I found the answer. Until then, I was buying pre-ground espresso in packs at the local supermarket. But that day, back at my local cafe, enjoying a real shot of espresso that I wanted to be making with this machine, it hit me. I asked the barista, could I maybe have some of the batch that he was making to take back home? I took it back home, prepped the puck, and out comes beautiful thick crema. I had found the solution to my predicament or so I thought. So in life, every solution brings forth more problems. The Aero Piccola La Pavoni will only give you those thick shots of espresso with the crema on top 
if you feed it beans that have been freshly roasted and freshly ground for espresso. And which brings us to my next problem. You see, I had tried grinding beans at the local supermarket, which yielded no good results. Without getting into the science of it, uh, when you grind a coffee bean, it begins to lose its flavor, its aromas, its oils, and begins to dry out. Dry coffee does not make good espresso. So perfect, you go to the store, you get some high quality, freshly roasted, dark Neapolitan style coffee, bring it back home, now what? So sooner or later, you're going to need to invest in a grinder. Now no problem, you say, uh, grinders aren't that expensive, I can pick one up fairly cheaply on the internet, but no, as I found out, not every grinder that you pick up online will grind coffee thin enough to make good quality espresso. You see, espresso coffee needs to be ground very thin because of its very short infusion time, which is ultimately going to bring you down the second rabbit hole, which is espresso grinders. <laughs> Long story short, espresso grinders are not cheap. You're looking at easily 200 euros and up. Just know that if you want to get good shots of espresso with this, you're going to need a grinder. And with this, you are going to be grinding for about 30 seconds every time you want to make a coffee. Now, if you don't want to be doing that, you're looking at electrical grinders with motors and that is going to increase the price even more. Furthermore, this is optional, but if you want any kind of consistency uh, with your espresso to do some troubleshooting or know exactly what you want and make sure that you're getting it every time, you're going to need a precision scale. And although these things are not hugely expensive, uh, the prices do add up. And finally, a tamper station. This may sound obvious, but uh, with some fully automatic espresso machines that have the grinder inside, all of this is not necessary. But in this case, these are things that you need because if you're not using this, making espresso with a La Pavoni becomes quite chaotic. Now, if you brew espresso with only this and without all of this, it is possible, but your workstation is going to be very messy and results will be mediocre. So consider this because the prices do add up. In practice, when you're going to be using this thing, you're going to be grinding, you're going to be weighing, you're going to be tampering, and you're going to be pulling a lot of coffee. And as you can imagine, this can be a quite messy affair, especially if you're just starting out. It's a manual machine, which requires a lot of manual labor, which in turn requires a lot of cleaning up after yourself, which is to be expected. What I did not expect, though, is this. Although my model here has a drip tray, it also has a screw in the bottom. And that screw is not watertight, meaning that after you pull a shot of espresso, there's always residual water dripping out that is going to go through the hole here, out through the bottom, and make a terrible mess. The only workaround is this. So essentially, my espresso machine doesn't look like this. It always looks like this. Do you like it? Do you not like it? That's the way it is. This is the only workaround I've found. This brings us to another point that may not be entirely clear to people who've never used this thing, is that this espresso machine makes espresso and only espresso. Other espresso machines can dish out a whole variety of different types of coffee, americano, cappuccino, lungo, and so forth. Cappuccino, marocchino, mocacioc, macchiato caldo, macchiato freddo, americano con acqua calda a parte, doppio. Cocciolino, valdostano, shakerato, con ginseng, corretto grappa. Not the Euro Piccola. We'll get to cappuccino later, but this machine is designed to make espresso and nothing else. Now there are workarounds. In fact, the whole web is populated with a whole community of people that are fans of the Euro Piccola, proposing different technical modifications and techniques, most notably the Fellini or the double Fellini, all intended to modify the volume of the coffee that you can get out of these things. The Fellini refers to a 1978 Federico Fellini film in which in the background, you can see a barista pulling two shots of Neapolitan-style coffee 
you can go very deep again down this rabbit hole. Just know that whatever the workaround you may eventually choose to be making longer Americanos with this, it is exactly what it is, a workaround. This machine is simply not designed to brew coffee that is longer than a one to two or a one to three ratio, which will get you a cup of espresso. Now, if you don't know what that means when we talk about espresso ratios, that brings me to my next point. As you may have seen by now, the Aero Piccola comes with a whole subculture, which is a good thing because the internet is filled with people and resources and information on anything that you may need about this. This. The downside is that if you don't want to at least learn a little bit about espresso and more specifically how to tame this, there are many other machines that would be much easier to use. They say it's not for beginners and that may be partially true. This however was my first espresso machine. I knew nothing before I bought the Aero Piccola. I learned and with a bit of time and reading I developed a technique that suits my taste and gets me a consistent high quality, good shot of espresso out of this. Every time, almost. Biggest disappointment here, this, the steam wand, sucks. Can't make good cappuccinos with it, can't make good frothy milk with it, and I've tried, I've tried a lot. Let me know in the comments if you've succeeded in making good milk froth with this, I really wanna know. But if you wanna make cappuccino, keep that in mind. I don't really drink cappuccino, so it's not a big deal for me, but if I wanna make cappuccino for my guests, I did end up buying this, which is the Bialetti milk frother, I don't know what you call it. Keep that in mind if you're a minimalist. You're acquiring a lot of different coffee paraphernalia. So as promised, before we move on to a demonstration, here are some common mistakes to avoid when starting out with this thing. Don't let it overheat. This is not the kind of machine that you want to leave turned on all day. It gets extremely hot, the group head included. What I recommend you do is you turn it on. Once the green light turns off, wait three, four minutes more, Pull your shot and turn it off. Enjoy your espresso. Don't fill it up with too much water. There's a gauge here, don't go past the top. If you do, it's gonna start spitting out water from all directions and not function properly. Don't open this when it's hot. This is the most important mistake to avoid at all costs. When this thing has been turned on, whether it's on or off, if it's hot, do not open this a water container. If you do, there's a lot of steam pressure that is going to come your way and it can cause some serious injury. If for some reason you've made a mistake, you need to open this thing, maybe you didn't put enough water in, open the valve, let all the steam go out. You see there's still some water, see? Open the valve, let all the steam go out, and when there's no more steam coming out, then it'll be safe to open this again. Do not remove the porta filter after pulling a shot of coffee. This I wasn't expecting because when you pull a shot of coffee, there is still some pressure in here, meaning that if you remove the porta filter too soon, you're going to get a Jackson Pollock painting on your walls and on yourself. So what I recommend is that after you pull a shot, wait 15 to 20 seconds and then remove the porta filter to prep your next puck. Finally, I personally would recommend not exerting too much downwards pressure with this. You don't want to be pushing like a madman. If you do, you're probably grinding your coffee too finely and consider going for a coarser grind. The reason for this being is that it's never happened, but it would be a catastrophe for this axis to snap. So you'll see in my demonstration, I will be pushing downwards with one hand and pushing in the other direction to compensate with the other. Which brings us to the demonstration.
So, is it worth it? To be quite honest, if I had known all of this before buying it, I think I would have maybe reconsidered my choice, which would have been a terrible mistake, because this machine is fantastic. Let me put it this way, you have to go to Rome, and you have a choice on how to get there. Either you take a vintage Alfa Romeo through the Alps, through the Dolomites, and drive there yourself, or you take a plane. Whatever the choice, you're going to get to your destination. One will be longer and more complicated, but provide you an unforgettable feeling. Along the way, you'll learn not only about the car, its mechanics, but also about your environment, the curves on the road, the culture of the towns where you stop to get gas. And you may have to purchase some additional parts and accessories. So do I recommend it? If you want to be able to drink a coffee in the morning within the touch of a button, with a machine that is simple, consistent, and easy to use, then no, I don't recommend it. But if you're looking for a machine that produces excellent quality espresso and are willing to sacrifice a bit of practicality for beauty and feeling, then yes, by all means. I enjoy getting up in the morning, grinding my coffee, prepping the puck, feeling how I'm getting a good shot of espresso out of it. I even love cleaning this thing. It's not for everyone, but if you're curious and you want to learn about coffee, then I can absolutely recommend this machine. It's a beautiful, timeless piece of Italian engineering. Join the club and let me know if you do. Ask me any questions that you may have in the comments, because ultimately I would ask myself the question, what is more important to you, the destination or the journey?